Why would God care about me? Why would God care about you? Think about how big the universe is. When you start to zoom out, you begin to realize how small you really are. Psalm 8, 3 to 4. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set into place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? We see this incredible world, then we zoom out, and we see this incredible universe. We know the transcendent God who put it all into place by the breath of his lungs. He put it into place out of nothing, and yet here we are expecting God to care about us. And from down here, man, it's sometimes hard to believe that he does. Lie number one. God can only care about me when I can gain his acceptance and love. Because God is so amazing, I need to at least achieve somewhat of that amazingness in order to get his attention. This is from Romans 8 here. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You think about how amazing the universe is and God says, look, even the space of the universe, height or depth of all the world, of all existence, of all reality cannot separate us from the love of God. Line number two, my past sins can separate me from the love of God. In Romans 8, it says, therefore, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. The difference between conviction and condemnation, the Holy Spirit will pry our conscience when we are going astray, drawing us back to the Father. Condemnation is a voice from the devil saying you don't deserve God he doesn't care about you you're too far gone condemnation says you are guilty and can never be forgiven conviction says remember my child you are already forgiven come back to the father line number three says that my present sin can separate me from God because when I sin I run away from God because I'm scared or I feel unworthy or I feel unloved because look what I've done. God could never love me. In Hebrews 4.16, it says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. How could we draw to the throne room of God with confidence? Oftentimes we feel insecure about going to God because we feel so low and so dirty for what we've done. But we have confidence because not of what we have done, but because of who Jesus is. Because he has saved us by his grace. He's given us life for us. And he has said, you are saved. You are in me now. I've taken the place that you deserved. And now you are my child. Now you can have confidence in drawing to the throne room of, of grace, and yet we don't believe that. Life for my failure can separate me from God's love. In Zephaniah 3.17, it says, The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love, and he will exult over you with loud singing. This is not the first place it says God delights in us. But notice something, God is not just delighting in what you do, in what you think, in what you say, in your actions, and how much money you make, and how many people you bring to Christ, and how many orphanages you serve at, or how many old ladies you walk across the street. He delights in you, in your identity. Think about this, if you had a child right? Even before that child has done anything for you, right? You are doing everything for that baby. And if you've had a kid, maybe you know this. 
That kid has done nothing for you, that infant. It can do nothing. And yet, there's so much joy and you delight in it. Why? Because it is your child. Just in the same that we are good deeds, man. They're so small compared to God. Almost insignificant, it feels like. But God delights in us, not because what we do is so amazing, but because we're his child. That's amazing. So if you're struggling right now to believe that God actually loves you and you're buying into the lies that say, look, my past sins can separate me from God or I need to earn God's love and approval or my current sins are separating me from God's love or my failure is separating me from God's love. Understand this. It is God who has saved you and it was God who made you. He didn't make trash. What God makes is amazing. And you know what? What brokenness was there when sin came into the world and the damage that was done? There is now a restoration process that is happening within you by his grace. He's given you a new identity. And you know what? He delights in you. I want you to believe that. I pray that you believe that today. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. And until you realize that, man, you'll always be looking for cheap substitutes. Whether that's pornography, whether that's escape and entertainment, whether that's money. Until you truly believe that, look, God loves me and that's enough. You'll always be unsatisfied. You'll always be coming up short. You'll always be striving for that next hit, that next thing that's going to bring you some sort of fulfillment. And look at me. It's not there. It's emptiness. In Christ, in Christ's love, we can begin to get a sense of the wholeness in him. That through broken pieces within us, he is forming a masterpiece in him. Amazing truth, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with somebody that needs to see it today. Um, subscribe down below because I'm making new videos every single week. Blessings, guys, and I'll see you next time.